Hello people and welcome to another edition of or another knife review here on a dose of Drew. It was originally intentionally to be a Friday night knives. It did not come out on Friday. I will put it in the playlist anyways. It was intended. But this is the Kershaw Heist, one of the new Duralock flippers from Kershaw. Uh if you've seen the unboxing also on my channel, you know you'll know that the action was a little bit uh unsatisfactory out of the box. There's also a little bit that went out uh on the on Friday that uh showed the cleaning bit. As you can see, the uh, action is definitely much improved, though it is not perfect. It has its own little bit. First things first here, though, this is the Kershaw High Stick. Look, it is a mid-sized folder. To give you an idea what I mean by that, it is one of these that is the right approximately three inch. It's a little over three inches. It's about three and an eighth inches on the blade length. Overall length, slightly over seven and a half inches, about seven and five eighths inches. With, with all of that is nice and thin. You can go with some of that. Just a little, little under about three eighths of an inch thick, a little bit over that, somewhere around there when it comes to the handle. Nice and slim. Full liners, non skeletonized with the Duralock as the Omega Springs, like many of the crossbar locks, but full liners giving it um, quite a bit of heft. A little bit here, we'll get into the. Uh, relative measurements here in a sec with the other in a sec with all the other knives but first we'll give you a quick uh weight here 2.82 ounces for everyone who is wondering the one that came out alongside of this the covalent right oh i mean that's the exact same weight so yeah we're, we're looking fairly similar here um all right so here we go with the normal stuff to give you an idea. This is, again, right in that mid-sized bit. So we will give it just a couple of things here. First, the Rat Wide, as you can see, much larger. And, of course, the R2-D2, the R2 and D2, the Rat 2 and D2. It is very similar in size, but with much, much, much more blade length, if you look real close. A lot of the same hand space on the rat too, but with more blade, which is always welcome. Uh, more blade, more blade, yay! All right, next thing up, the paramilitary two. This one, my per my personal one here, an S90V, fully blacked out. You can get those online, and of course the para three. As you can see, once again, similar things. A lot of the same hand space, more blade, similar blade length to the paramilitary two. Similar hand space if you if you go to the beak, so you get a, you, you get you get a lot in this little sucker. Alrighty, and one more double up comparison for the relative measurements here, and it is just a blur. As you can see, uh, again, hand space similarity, blade length similarity, a lot of good stuff there, and not just any leak, but a random leak. Again, hand space similarity, more blade. You get a, a, oh God, I wish there was a choil on the sucker. Um, but yeah, you get a lot mid-size similar to the blur here. A lot of hand space like we all like on the leak, even though it has a smaller blade, but with a bit more taller blade. Better blade geometry too. We'll get to that in a minute because these are almost the same blade stock like that that's something i want to point out real quick while i'm on it that's ridiculously thin blade stock that is one slicey little blade stock piece and of course it has the deep carry clip all right and just a couple more here oh, i'll flip this around so we can get a better bench made bug out all right, so you can see they're very similar. Obviously, this is in the same area of vein and everything as a bug out. Very similar blade, the cutting edges. Similar hand space, but with a little bit more choil area on the heist. All right, all right, so bug out, gone. And of course, Civivi Elementum. As you can see, once again, 
Similar on the hand space, but more blade. Recurring theme here in a lot of these. And of course, last, last but definitely not least, this is how it compares to my Wien R. As you can see, my Wien R is both thicker, girthier, and it just has a better shape. That is objective, not subjective. I just like the shape of my Wien R. What can I say? All right, now, now let's get back to the knife here a little bit. The design on it is really good. This is the Durlock. It's got, it's got a lot of the normal design uh, features you would think of in a Kershaw here. When, you, when I say that, I mean things like the, the arch with the thumb. If you wanted to look at some of the something else that would kind of give you similar bits, there is the Kershaw link. So you can see a similarity of handle, handle shape there. Right, you can, there. There's a lot of family resemblance, so to speak. And that little that little symbol right there tells you it was an in-house design. Gives gives a lot of room. Has, has good grip. It definitely there's without the beak and with the roll off on the back end here, you get a good saber saber grip where your thumb is up on top there. You also get a good pinch grip. And the studs are just in the right place that you can pinch right up on the studs. Have a spot for your finger and really get some work. It is not a full flat grain, but with that thin of a blade stock, that is still really good, good geometry, relatively thin, for a Kershaw, relatively thin behind the edge. Big swedge here to help it move through material, especially soft material or things like paper that move fairly easy and it can break the uh, stiction on the, on the actual surface. Um, I did not have the greatest of action when I first got it, and it still has, an for me, an unusual action. I want to bring out the bug out here. If, if you if you look at the bug out and you and you pull it right, it'll go halfway, somewhere in between there, and it'll drop right about there. The is where the blade just moves the thing. Kershaw's significantly sh shorter on the angle. It's a significantly more acute angle there, and it starts going. It has a very, very positive, positive detent that way. This is a really strong detent as far as holding the blade. Let me move that out of the way for a minute. So that design is really cool. and it, But it does give it a, a more deliberate action profile. So it does take a little flick of the wrist. It's got this thin blade, so it doesn't have a lot of extra momentum or mass to give it some momentum to, to bring it in, or kinetic energy, if you will. Um, meaning you need a little bit of velocity to, to move it in. So a flick of the wrist does great, but it can easily fail if you just try and wiggle it down. It just, it, it's not that it's not, oh boy, I can't do this on camera. It's not that it's not completely drop shutty. Um, it's really hard to do that on camera, but it can't fail. It, it's, it's. Got washers, so it's definitely going to have the grid out, and it has a it's it's a more utility knife. It's a more utility minded knife um, with the very solid detent right here. Like it's hard. To, the amount of uh, it takes a lot of you can you can do it, but it takes a lot to get that detent out. This being in also in contrast to something like the covalent, where you can just pull it back and it deploys pull it black and it comes in pull it right, pull. again on camera here arms are all up in a weird angle pull it back and i am not timing it well pull it back into place right pull it back into place anyway now that i finally got used to the heist i'm not used to this so pull it back to place pull it back and it comes in in fact you can you can get a lot on there if you just right whereas if i pull back on this the blade doesn't even deploy like it's a, it's a different geometry significantly different geometry one that may appeal to a certain number of people there's a, a really large bit here for the lanyard lanyard uh on the lanyard mount where it is also narrowed for a good lanyard pull. Will it squeeze the other? Yes. And they put a separate spacer in there that is non... These are all mounted with screws. 
this spacer is not. It is there not only to help provide stability, but to provide stability where the lanyard is so it doesn't pinch too hard and, and upset the balance on there. Very nice tension to detail. The deep carry clip, great. Is this, this is definitely more grippy than, say, the Covalent. The Covalent works well, and I've worn it with athletic shorts. I've worn it with sweats. I've worn it with pants. Works very good. This one works less well with something like athletic shorts, but it provides more solid grip over a greater range of conditions. It is more of a working blade. Uh, the D2 gives you great edge retention. You have a, a slightly spear point, even though they have made it less than symmetrical. It's still a good bit. And that, that's really where I get into the design part. It's, it's meant to pull this in. It's meant to bring this in. It's meant to have that sort of stuff where indeed you now have this. And, and it... <sighs> To be able to get through different material, have the switch to be able to break up that, that surface clean, so to speak. Still have the robust tip. The durability of the crosslock as well as the ease of use and all that. The design is quite good. The aesthetics on it, uh, you, know it's a, you know it's a working knife. You know it's something you can hold. The blade gives this nice wide profile, which immediately you know means it's ready to work. While it could have been ground higher, it could have had a little bit of something as far as like giving it an even higher profile grind, you know, um, something like the Menchmade bug out. If you look real close, you'll see that the, let me see if I can do it this way. And it's very similar to the grind height on the bug out. The bug out has a slightly higher grind height, giving it slightly better cutting geometry, very similar blade stocks. Uh, in fact, I would I would wager they're probably the same. Um. So yeah, th but the aesthetics on it are really good. The mechanics go right along with it. Yes, it's a it's a more deliberate, and it sucks on camera, you guys. It really does. I hate, man, I hate saying that because I've seen some of it's like you can't do it on camera, but yeah, it, it just is a thing. All right. So, it, but it does take a little bit of wrist flick. It also doesn't accidentally deploy as easily as many other crossbar locks. It makes it a little bit harder. It just makes it a more deliberate thing. You can slow roll this pretty easy. And in fact, it's, it's almost impossible to not slow roll it closed or do something else to, you know, like the wrist flick to bring it in. It's easy to flip out, a little bit more difficult to bring back in. Imagine does it. Is that bad? You know, when I first got it, it was... It was a mess. There was so much gunk in here that the action just wasn't even good. That ha I can tell you that cleaning out does. Is that something? The amount of, if you look at the quick video, the amount of gunk that was in this thing is something that I don't think any production knife manufacturer, especially on the size and level that Kershaw's at, wants in their production knives. That I've had a few knives, maybe two or three other knives in my entire life that have had that level of gunk that were on a significant production level, not just gas station style knives. Um, and this this was by far th th top two. Um, it may have taken this. Th there was just so much gunk. The amount of gunk that was just coming off the screws by putting them in rubbing alcohol blackened the alcohol. That's a lot of grit and gunk that is coming off things like your crossbar, you know, where all the, you know, where paint or whatever it is. Um, really messes up the action, really gunks, really gunks it up and gummies up the action. You clean it up and it's relatively good. It's not, not bad. It takes a decided hand to maneuver and move it. It really, really does. Um, and that may be a good thing. You may want a knife that when you pull it out requires a slightly more deliberate hand when you're doing it. So you don't worry, you know, it does all the things like, you know, reverse flick, all that. Thumb flick, yeah, you can you, you can do all this stuff if you're used to. You can make it do the gravity drop um, with a ser serious flick, but it takes a lot more than most. And that's really where it comes down to. Design, 
utility utility cutter this is designed to be a utility type blade thin slicey stuff d2 steel so you got good edge retention and a nice switch so you can move the only thing is i don't think that most d2 is going to be going through a lot of moist wet or soft material but i could be wrong that's usually what a big switch is best for but it's not the only thing things like extended cardboard cuts and stuff like that also help if you need to maneuver so it's 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 definitely a good utility blade the aesthetics let you know exactly what it's after this is a knife that's going to have some good cutting capabilities you know anything about the blade stock if you get more than just a picture like that where you can see the thinness of it the lightness of it you can see some of the specs um the knife delivers on what it looks like which brings us to some of the the other stuff the no the point it is kershaw's duralock look it, it, in a head-to-head -head battle between the heist and the covalent i would tell you the covalent is the better overall all-around knife now that is my personal preference i like the con more contourness this is definitely more flat the covalent is more contoured um exact same weight slightly higher grind and i like the action better on on the uh, covalent but that doesn't mean that it the heist is an objectively bad knife in any way it's actually if you're going to be using something where you think about you might need it you use it in grit you use it in dust um or you do use it in things that may get moist once in a while um you know there might be some wetness in there when you're doing work giggity uh then this is not a bad option, especially since the covalent here is on washers. Or not washers, it's on it's on the caged bearings. And the heist is on washers. So the heist does have a bit more, you know, dust, gr dirt, grime, resistance. It's got full liners. It's got the more square profile, so you get large, flat control surfaces on here. It's got the heavier... Uh, heavier duty grip on there as well as a blade more suited for moving through material um, especially having the whole blade profile in the material while you're cutting through it the the full flat grain of the switch is no slouch and, and, and you know i i would argue that this is a, a better edc daily blade but if you're someone who wants to use your knife hard you, you do have grit you have or you often just have dirty hands you know, instead of dirty, you know, you have dirty hands, not a dirty knife. This might be a better option for you. And that, that's something I want to really get into. It's, it's intended purpose isn't exactly the same as, say, the covalent or some of the other knives. It's definitely more of a um, hard use scenario type knife. It's got more dust resistance in the pivot. It's got more grip. If you're one of those people who want who 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 definitely uses more of a save grip and you want the bigger surface area that a squared handle provides, this is a better knife for you on that intended purpose. And that's that's really what it comes down to. It's it's uh you know, it's it's got that utility intended purpose and it's designed for that where you have a more distinct detent. It has a more crisp opening. It's more solid and opens less uh easily so that you have a greater peace of mind when this tool is in your pocket and that's the cause of it's the, the it costs approximately the same it's going to be hard not to compare it to the covalent everybody because they came out at the same time and they are from the same manufacturer they are almost the same size they have exactly the same weight both are d2 steel both use the new duralock and both have an obvious intended purpose of edc the heist seems to have more of a we're going out it, I, I would dare to say the heist has more of an outdoor profile where you're going to put this in your backpack or you have a bug out uh, bag or something like that and this might be your other option in there it's not a bad not a bad choice it does have an overall profile that's good and again you don't have to worry about trying to take it apart you won't have a pivot that gets cook in it even though as many people will always wonderfully point out you can essentially just rinse out crossbar locks as well, as long as you can dry them conveniently. So it's hard not to put these two together. And that's really what it comes down. They're similar in idea, but they're just different enough that you can tell. This one is more of a daily EDC, and, well, the heist is, is more of a, I, I may have daily EDC tasks, 
but I work in a dusty, dirty, or otherwise gritty environment that may, that uh, lighter knives may not survive as well in. And in that sense, the heist shines. That does give it a different use profile as well as a different design language that really does live up to what it's trying to do. And that's at $57 or just under 60 bucks for this particular one and, and the Coven as well. This is a good deal. Is it the only, no, right, we're right around the 60 to $70 D2, 14 C20 and 9 C. You know, the basic good, we live in a really spoiled time in knives where D2, 154 CM, 14 C28 and a 9 CR18 are all budget steals where you can go and get a $60 or $70 knife with any of those steals in it that's heat treated well, will have really good action and has a good sharp edge on it. That is a budget knife person's dream. That is a spoiled place in pocket knives where you have, if you can have 154 CM, 14 C28, and 19 uh, CR18, or 9 CR18, not 19, and D2 as your budget steals, D2 is a is still the sort of standard bearer, bearer for wear resistance. 14 C28N is a, a, a low wear resistance poster child for... Uh, a lower, I shouldn't say low, poster child for balanced attributes. 154CM is as well, and so is 9CRT. They all represent different ends of a balanced edge spectrum. So does the Kershaw Fitness? Yes, absolutely. You get a great, great amount of value for the cost in here. The D2 is done. The action is good. The springs are usually pretty good from what I've seen on both of them so far. You get this nice thin thing. It seems to be well heat treated and it holds an edge under use. Um, I have used this on a few boxes, still shaves. Does shave out of the box, it's not exactly rough. I would not recommend shaving your face. It shaves your arms and stuff quite well. And that'll bring me to the expectations. I expected this to be a utility cutter. I was hoping it would be more like the Bug Out or more like the Covela, and it took me a little bit to really bring myself to what the heist is trying to do. And that's if you expect it to be a really super smooth drop, shuddy, pocket, uh, pocket protecting, uh, you know, EDC knife. That's not what this is. This is designed to be more of a harder use daily cutter where you may where you may or may not have only one tool in your pocket and then and then it shines it's if you're in it again a dusty dirty gritty environment and you just need a pocket knife this this won't get grit in there it will have the same action even with honestly with the amount of grit that was in here it's going to be hard for a person to get more <laughs> than that in this pocket knife than what was in here and it still had decent action so it does have that. And as long as you're expecting that, I would say that's not bad. Personally, I would love to see this in something like um, like the Covalent where you have the caged bearings. But I think for the people that this is really speaking to or for the use case that this knife would be put under, that would be a detriment to it. The, the, the people who don't want the Covalent but would rather have the heist – do do work you don't even need to use your knife in it but if you're in a dusty environment if you're in a place where there's a lot of dust dirt and grime just blowing around having it in your pocket or having to pull it out every once in a while will get dirt and grime in there especially if it's fine dust so if you're in one of those situations this is possibly a better knife for you and it wouldn't be for the covalent and there's not a lot of requests on there i i, I would prefer a slightly more um, smooth action, but that's because I don't use those environments. I don't use a lanyard. They did a really good job of making sure that people who do use a lanyard are taken care of. They have a really, really open lanyard hole for it. So you can take a lot of big cord. That, well, something like the, uh, say, the covalent may not. It has a, a smaller uh, receiving hole. Giggity. Uh, and all that sort of stuff. So, so it's definitely aimed towards people who have that mindset. And if you're up on the thing, if, if you're doing things, it does all the wonderful stuff. You can get a good, you know, sort of pinch grip, a, a you know, overhand grip and all of that 
it, it works. It's got everything there. It's actually a really good knife. Do I like the covalent better? Yes, for my use case, for what I do, and for most of the scenarios I'm in, I like the covalent better than this knife. But that doesn't make this a bad knife. If I didn't have the covalent and I got this, I'd be like, eh, the Kershaw definitely has a more utility, utility oriented action um, compared to like the bug out or say the Hogue or, or many of the other crossbar locks. But the covalent has a more unique action. It has a higher grind. Once you get to the higher grind versus the thinner blade stock, it's almost a wash, if not a little bit, onto the higher grind for the covalent. But it's still very similar in blade geometry. <coughs> Excuse me. That being said, I'm going to start to roll this up because there's not a lot of requests. Um, Kershaw really did a good job for me of really putting this in where they wanted to. If there's anything, a little bit of jimping up on the blade wouldn't hurt right there so that it's not the smooth part, you know. Kershaw's put jimping on the top of the blade, but really at the at the thumb ramp there would have been where I would have said, you know, hey, a little bit of jimping, you know, a little crenellation action wouldn't have been bad. This isn't bad. I like what they did with the fingers. They're, you know, it's not really a finger choil, but they make it so that you can put your finger there relatively safely. Definitely a good thing. Um, and so that's going to bring it. There's not a lot of requests on there yet. I would kind of like it, but any requests I have would significantly change the character of this knife, and I think that would do it a disservice. Most of the requests I have would be to make it more like the covalent. But I have the covalent, so that's kind of an unnecessary request. So that's really where I'm at with this one. Um, there's not a lot of requests. It does a pretty good job as it is. You won't find that too often. I say there's no requests. The requests I have would just essentially change the character and utility nature of the knife. So that's one of the few times you will he not hear me say, I have a request on here. It has good action, right? The spring is good. There's not a lot you can do about the intended action where it is not meant to be all drop shutty, right? It is meant to have some stiction to it so that it does require an, a little bit of wrist flip. At least that's the best I can do. If 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 I undo the pivot point so much that it, it drop shuts, it's too loose. So that tells me it was engineered in, which is fine. And that'll bring it to it. The, the design of this is as a utility type, harder use or dirtier use, giggity, knife. Um, the aesthetics of it, good. It's you may or may not like it, but it definitely has all the knife vibes. You got the swedge. You got the you got the pinch point. You, you can tell what it's for. So it's definitely on the mechanics, top notch. It works. There's very little here that as far as mechanically is just wrong. It's more, it's it's intended design. So there it is. Um, and, you know, the noteworthy points on it are really that it's just a good utility cutter. So it's in, it's it's nice to go through there. You can use it. It's, it's definitely going to help you maintain the clean, um, the thin blade stock, the big swedge, the robust point all make for a good cutter. And the cost is under $60, which makes it a really good value. Is it, is it a value like, I don't know, like a chirp at under 30? Not necessarily, not necessarily, but you get more for your money too. So what if it's double? You also get a bigger blade. You get a possibly a more utility. There's a lot of things you get for that money. Is it an absolute better value for a sharp cutting tool no but is it a good absolute value of course it is a great absolute value so we'll go there and that's going to bring me to the end of this again another uh, another knife you here but it, you know i'll give this one a four stars it's very it's very good for what it's intended it's not my particular favorite but that doesn't make it good for what it's doing it's just it goes towards a different use case than my personal one that doesn't make it bad in any way. Reversible pocket clip for tip up only. Um, and it is Kershaw's mini uh, deep carry. And they have it without the lip anymore. So it just goes straight up. Might catch on a few things. That's the only thing I can complain about. I guess if I was to have one thing I could say I could do a request, it would be to spoon bill the end of this. So you get a larger rounder thing so you don't have the corners to catch on stuff or to catch on your finger when you do it. It's a little bit sharp, even though it is all rounded off. It's just, you, you could do have like a spoon bill uh, sort of thing on there that would be better. 
is is it really nitpicky of me to sit here and complain about the end of a pocket clip on a knife that's under sixty dollars? Yeah, because that's about the only thing that I can complain about is is, is it, it could have a slightly better design on the pocket clip for sixty dollars. So there you go, four stars because it's not my thing, but you know it is a great knife. It's there's really not much to complain about. Could it be a little bit better? Could there be? Yeah, but you'd also probably be a lot more expensive. Is the quality there? Yeah. Was there a lot of gunk? Yeah. I have no idea why that is. Is it something I've experienced on other Kershaws? No, not other Kershaws. Other knives, but not other Kershaws. So do I feel like it's probably not indicative? Yeah. I've seen a lot of people talk about the heist action and... Um, with it clean, I can see it. With it with the knife cleaned, I can see that it is a little bit different. There may be a production issue with a lot of gunk, and so you're getting an excess number of stuff. But the designed action is also probably throwing a couple people off. That being said, I'm going to wrap this up, you guys. Four stars on this. Still a great knife. Not my personal favorite when it comes to covalent and other people might rank it a little bit higher given their use case or their preference, but it's not a bad knife. I rank the covalent higher, but this is still a good budget friendly knife. D2 steel. Uh, the Duralock, a, a cross, the Kershaw's version of the crossbar lock and a very non-skeletonized, highly durable, under three ounce utility knife with very thin blade stock hard to go wrong there really if they get it right and kershaw did a pretty good job of getting this one done right so yeah there it is kershaw heist four stars highly recommendable that will bring an end to this review here on a dose of drew go ahead and watch it twice comment as much as you like be mindful of side effects and remember subscribe this has been your dose of drew i am said drew and you guys have a great rest of your night